<laughs> What's going on guys? Welcome to Ranch Red Talk where we discuss all the topics you send through to me on Twitter. Sponsored by the One Football app. For all your up-to-date football news guys, make sure you scroll down into the description and download the link and enjoy. Um Yeah man. It's, it's been a bit of a mad one still, obviously, after yesterday's result. I've just finished um, filming the Flex and Man show, which is coming to you tomorrow as well. So, yeah, um, off the back of the weekend's results, um, there's going to be some interesting questions. And let's just get straight back into it. First one, at Alpha Music, it says, Do you think the players are backing Oli because they truly believe in him or because they know they can hide behind the fact that when they underperform, they have an excuse because of this supposed long-term rebuild. Um, brilliant, brilliant question. I think you're spot on. I think a lot of the players know that all these coaching methods, etc., etc., aren't good enough. A lot of these players would have either played under Salik, would have played under Louis van Gaal, and would have played under Mourinho. So, like it or not, all of these managers were technically a lot better than Oli, innit? Like, do you know what I'm saying? Whether or not I like Mourinho or not, or whatever, at least he's got previous. He's got, he, he has to be respected in the game. Like, regardless, I don't like him as a manager, but you have to respect what he's achieved. Van Gaal, you have to respect what he's achieved. Um, Salah Ferguson speaks for himself. Man don't need to speak about the other Don because he wasn't at the club long enough to really do anything and he was a trash manager anyway. But um, honestly, these men would know what elite level preparation looks like. That fast with Oli on the side with Mason Greenwood flicking through the folder, blood. Real life PE teacher. Mason was like, what is this fucking shit, blood? Just let me get on the pitch and so I can just put the ball in the net. Mason couldn't believe it. Man flicked forward, flicked back, flicked up again. And he was just like, bruv, what is this? It looked like Tetris, fam. So really, we drew the game. Oli comes out smiling and then you've got David De Gea coming out talking shit, yeah, with the VAR picture saying, oh, look, I got fouled. Bruv, it's De Gea's fault we conceded that goal. He came out like a little pom-pom, bruv, and that's exactly what he got. He came out like a pussy, oh, and you got what you deserved. If any of my players go into a tackle or a challenge or whatever with their eyes closed or they're turning away or whatever, you're getting pulled off, bruv, because you're not committed. De Gea should have came right through, man, cleaned him out. End the story, bruv. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, you clean man out, and then you ask questions after. There's none of this jumping, turning away, and all that bullshit, bro. You got what you deserve, bro. 100% the haters' fault for that goal. Harry Maguire coming out saying, um, I can't remember his um, exact words, um, but insinuating that we were unlucky, and we've been clinical and this, that, and the other. Load of nonsense. We had something like four shots on target out of, like, 19 or something like that. There's nothing clinical about that. Um... These guys can hide behind Oli's bullshit saying, oh, it's going to come, United DNA, we're building something. He's the perfect manager because he accepts mediocrity. Man's smiling off the drawers. At least under Maureen, when we drew a game like this, he would have been fuming and questioning certain things. Um, even though I put this um, that draw completely down to the manager. So it's one of them things where, of course they want Oli in there. It's like having one of their mates there. Um, them men are having a free ride. A lot of players should be getting a rocket that are not getting a rocket. But also, largely, um, I don't think a lot of it is the player's fault. I really don't. Um, when you look at it, loads of people are saying, oh, we're not doing well because of the players and blaming the quality of the players. But this is the same quality of players that are beating the big teams. So if you're good enough to beat Man City and Tottenham, you're good enough to beat Aston Villa, you're good enough to beat Sheffield United. So I'm not hearing the quality of the players thing. I've always backed the quality of the players. Always. Even under Mourinho. Because I genuinely believe if you're good enough to beat teams like Tottenham and fucking Manchester City and all these other teams, why can you not beat the smaller teams? It has to be tactical. It can't be because of talent. It can't be because of talent. Because if you've got enough talent to beat man with better players than you, you've got enough talent to beat these small teams. That's like being a fighter and saying, oh, you know what, I can beat Wilder, I can beat Joshua, I can beat Fury, but I can't beat these fucking journeymen, bruv, that have more losses than wins on their resume. What kind of shit is that, blood? If you can beat the world champion, then you can beat everyone else, blood. That's just how it is. 
So I'm not trying to hear no shit that it's not Oli's fault why we can't beat the smaller clubs. At Munaj, I can't read your, your thing, there's not enough, but it says one best sniper. Our only hope now is Pogba coming back in the attacking mid -world. What if we're still shit then? What happens? We're not going to be. The reason why we're not creating is because we don't have um, we don't have anyone that can break the lines from the midfield. And also, we keep bypassing the midfield. These stupid diagonal balls from Harry Maguire. It is kind of his fault, but then it's not his fault. I think it's his fault because he shouldn't always be looking for them pull-up passes. I think that he he takes too long on the ball, invites pressure on himself, and he has to go long. But on the flip side to that, because our midfielders are not getting coached to come deep and collect the ball off him, he doesn't have many um, many options on when he receives the ball. So I think it's a combination between coaching and I think Harry Maguire is dwelling on the ball a bit too much, which I do not like um, in general. But I think that Pogba's creativity changes... The whole dynamic of the team. I keep saying we should go and get Christian Eriksen. It'll probably cost us 30 million tops in January. He can pass the ball and break the lines. I think if you've got a midfield with um, Christian Eriksen and Paul Pogba in it, we're going to create a lot of chances. And we're also going to bring players like Martial. We're going to get the best out of them. Because right now, bypassing the midfield for intelligent footballers, it's no good. For midfielders like Rashford and James... Who like running in straight lines is cool. You can ping it into the channels for them on the break. But against teams that play with a low block, we're always going to struggle. So um, I think that Pogba changes the whole dynamic of this football team. And one player shouldn't change the whole dynamic of the team. Which again goes down to coaching. Because no matter what 11's in, we should still have the same patterns of play going on. And we're not seeing that. Um, let me know what you think in the comment section on the first two things. Do you think that... The players are backing Oli because he's an easy scapegoat and they can hide behind him and they can get away with fuckeries. And also, do you think that Pogba changes the dynamic of this team for the better or for the worse? At Man Like Memphis 1, do you think Oli isn't going after foreign experienced players because they will question his tactics and training methods, plus his CV as a manager and are less enthusiastic about the romance side of things? I think so. I think that it's very hard for Oli to attract big name experience foreign players because why the hell would you want to play for Oli Gunnar Solskjaer? Um, as prestigious as Manchester United is, like remember in the summer, I was so confident we were going to get players in and then, do you know what I mean? It turned out that players just simply didn't want to play for Oli. Like the pull of Manchester United is definitely there, but the romance ain't really there no more. If you're, if you're a foreign player... You're looking at Manchester City now, you're looking at Liverpool and saying, yo, I want to play for these, man. Unless Man United are going to offer me obscene amount of rages, wages because, like, United don't play exciting football, bruv. They don't. If Oli was playing fucking, um, playing like like how Klopp or how Pepper playing, I don't think he would struggle to attract players. But the fact that he's a small name, he's inexperienced, and he doesn't play um, exciting football, bruv, like, none of that... None of that's on his side. Um, it's one of them ones where you're right. Foreign players don't give a shit. You have to sell them the club. Whereas to British players, yeah, you don't need to sell them Manchester United because it's still romantic to them. That's why you'll have better luck getting a James Madison than you will getting certain other players because you don't need to sell Manchester United to them. Harry Maguire, you don't need to sell um, Manchester United to Harry Maguire. But if it's Ruben Diaz, you might have to sell it to him because he's thinking, well... Man could just go to Pep. Do you see what I'm saying? And there's man blowing leaves outside my fucking house again, man. Well, go away, blood. I so know. Yeah, he's gone now. Um, so, yeah, I do absolutely. And I think tactically as well, I heard murmurs from some of the players when Oli first came in that the tactics were very dry and the training methods were very basic, innit? And, um... I think that he would definitely be called out on that by foreign players. So, it wouldn't surprise me, man. Like, Oli is, like, when man call him a PE teacher, brother, like, it, it's not looking far off, innit? One plan A, the plan A is dead. It only works against certain types of teams. It works against 20% of the league. That's relegation football. I'll keep saying it. Like, there's no agenda here. The facts speak for themselves. 
Um, where are we? The facts speak for themselves. And I saw a stat big up the United Arena as well. And it says here yeah, that in any game that Manchester United have had 55% possession or more, they have not won it. They've either drawn or lost it. And that shows you that Manchester United are useless in possession. They're toothless. They don't know how to break down low blocks. And that's 100% down to the tactics and not down to the player's ability. If you've got the ability to beat Tottenham and Manchester City, you have the ability to beat these other teams. It just means tactically he's not getting it right. At G the genius, the hate Martial receives because he doesn't run around like Jesse. Bro, I'm tired of this Martial slander. There's a there's a reason why Martial has um he's one of the only players in the team that has a song that gets sung no matter whether he's on the pitch or not. Everyone knows he's he's a phenomenal talent. The stick that this guy gets is a fucking joke. And I'm actually you know what it is with a lot of these Manchester United fans? They always need a scapegoat, innit? And most of the time, the scapegoat are Martial and Pogba for, for many reasons. Do you know what I'm saying? For many reasons. Like, these men love the shit out of Daniel James, yeah? He ain't scored since fucking September because he runs a lot, yeah? But then man want to stick it on Martial with with his fucking 10, in, 10 GA in 14, ga in 14 games. And man's been in and out with injury. And you've seen an upturn in fortune as soon as Martial's come back. He's crucial to how we play football. But he's always the first one that man want to fucking blame things on. But Daniel James is the sweetheart because he runs up and down, bruv. But man ain't really contributing. Like, it's a fucking joke, bruv. Like, I'm tired of it. And the thing is, Zlatan, world-class talent and that. When Zlatan came, I remember Zlatan's first season. He was missing four or five chances a game. And walking around the pitch. We were carrying him when he wasn't scoring goals. Nobody called Zlatan lazy, bro. But man want to call Martial lazy. And actually, he contributes more to the team than Zlatan did. Do you know what I mean? There's plenty of Manchester United greats as well. Like Eric, what my favourite, yeah? Like, he walked around the pitch all the time. No one called him lazy. A man will be like, oh, but... Yeah, but it's because he scored goals and that. So what? Either you're lazy or you're not lazy, bro. Do you know what I mean? What Martial does in linking up the play, no other player in the team has these qualities. On the ball, Martial's better than Rashford and Jan Daniel James. He's more intelligent than them. He links the play better than them. He does literally nearly everything better than them, but they're both quicker than him, bro. Right? That's a lottery. Any you born faster, you're not fast. When it comes to the footballing things, he's better than them at everything. But man wanna blame man wanna blame him. It was none of them three's fault against Everton that we didn't score enough goals. It's because the build-up play and bypassing the midfield against a low block is hampering all of our attacking players. But Martial's an easy scapegoat because he doesn't smile and he doesn't run around like a prick. Like, I'm absolutely... But I'm tired of it. And it's a very British mentality and it's a very small mentality. It's not a mentality that's shared by fans outside of this country. It's just that I tell man these Brexit ball brothers just like fucking... Your, your blue ass fly, Paul Dickov strikers that run around all the time, snapping at heels and all of that, don't get no goals, but they put in plenty of fucking effort, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, this is a joke. Absolute joke, man. I feel sorry for Martial, because if he was in a decent team that played decent football, intelligent football, and built through the midfield and broke the lines, you'd see Martial getting on to the end of a lot of stuff and slotting it in the top or the bottom bins, bro, because he's clinical. Martial don't need five chances to score a goal, unlike our other attackers. Do you know what I mean? And that's not a disrespect to them, but literally, Mason's clinical, um, Martial's clinical, that's it. Rashi's not clinical, Daniel James ain't clinical. Out of our starting attackers, Martial is by far the most clinical. So the shit that he gets, yeah, is it's a joke, innit? It? It's an absolute joke, guys. Alright, at... Hood pole, Ghetto Santa. It says, Ghetto Santa wants to know, how will you knock out the bomb that now he has accepted? Yeah, um, if you guys follow on Twitter, then, firstly, I'm fighting on the 8th of March anyway, regardless, innit? The venue's booked, um, embankment, it's a, a thousand, um, a thousand capacity. I was gonna be fighting anyway, I told you guys, didn't want no an opponent. Obviously, this idiot, um, unofficial bummed it, bruv. Has 
apparently accepted because I called him out. I didn't call him out. I just basically said that I wouldn't mind punching him in the face. I didn't say that I was going to call him out to the ring. I just felt like I would genuinely wouldn't mind punching him in the face. He wants to make a name for himself. Um, he's saying, oh, he'll fight. He put videos out saying he's going to fight me. Honestly, guys, I don't believe he will fight me. I believe that he just wants a bit of clout and he's trying to make a name for himself. So I'm going to be fighting. In my head, it's going to be someone else. If he surprises me and he comes through and he still and he does want to fight, then yes, I, I, I will be knocking him out. Um, when it says, how will I knock him out? Um, bro, put it this way, innit? Like, I've never seen him box. I don't know what he can do. So the first round, I'll see what he's about. And the second round, I'll stop him. That's that's how the, that's how the um that's how the last fight went. That's how I predict that this fight will go. But saying that, I don't think that he will fight me. I think I'll end up fighting another another YouTuber. I was meant to fight Heavy D at the O2 in April, but I heard that he lost his fight yesterday, guys. So and he lost his belt. So I don't know what the situation with that is. I don't know if the fight's still going on, but. In March the 8th, the venue's booked in Embankment. I will be fighting someone. Um, I'm still in discussion with a couple other people apart from the Bumdit. And there'll definitely be a fight. It'll be a good um, it'll be a good night out. I'm promoting it myself. It's going to be fun. There's going to be good music, good vibes. And um, yeah, bro, I look forward to seeing you lot there. At says S underscore Akiyama 4646. What other youth players are you a fan of other than Mason? Thoughts on Ghana, for instance, or any other up-and-coming player? Forgetting Gomez because he's leaving. Um, I like Led. I do like Led, and I do like Jimmy Garner as well. I'm not going to lie, though. I think that man overrate Garner a little bit. Like, I've seen him, and they compared him to Carrick and all that. I think that Carrick is good, yeah? I mean, not Carrick's good. I think... Um, Gone is good, but I don't think he's as good as these men were gassing him up to be, to be honest. I just think that he is a midfielder that likes to play a little bit. Do you know what I'm saying? And because he's man can know that these men are kind of gassed him up, bro. I think he's good. Don't get me wrong. But I don't think he is like... No, I don't think he's as amazing as them men are saying. The way they talk about him is like he's Mason level, but in midfield. Like, he's not that, in it. Um, I like Laird, man. Um, so... I think he's unlucky with it with the position that he plays in because man are very well stuck there in it. But I do like him, guys. Um, let me know who your favorite academy prospect is that is not obviously Mason Greenwood, isn't Tahith Chong and them because I see these man as first team players now. Um, and apparently Gomez has taken Manchester United out of his um, social media bios, and rightly so because um, Oli's done him dirty, man. And I wish um, Gomez all the best. Wherever he does decide to go, because he's a very talented player. At Dennis Joyce, Haaland to United. H money blood. H fucking money, bro. My friends, yeah, spent about an hour and a half yesterday in the group chat trying to convince me that Haaland is a good move for us, yeah. And I conceded, innit? Remember, I said to you, man, he's the Nordic Lukaku, yeah. And actually, I found a quote from Oli Gunnar Solskjaer comparing him to Lukaku when he was at Molda, so. Again, man thought I was firing shots at Haaland, but he, bruv, he's very similar to Lukaku. He's tall, he's left-footed, he's brutish. Do you know what I mean? It's not the most pleasing on the eye, but he's a lot more technical, isn't it? He's what Lukaku should be if he had a decent touch. He makes similar kind of runs. So, I look at Haaland, and also, um, Ornstein has confirmed that Haaland's in talks to Manchester United, so that means he's coming. Also, 17 million apparently is his buyout clause, but we, we're United, so we'll end up paying more because we're mugs. Do you know what I mean? But either way, if we get him for 20 million, it's uh, money well spent. He's young. I think, don't be surprised if you see Oli playing him from the right at times because he's left footed. And um, Lukaku came out saying that Oli was talking about playing him out wide. So don't be surprised if you see Haaland playing from the right and then drifting in. Um, I'm not going to pretend that I'm super over the moon about it, but, like, I want to see him do well, in it Because he has got a striker's instinct. Like, he's a very good finisher. Um, and he's young. And he can develop. So, in my honest opinion, 
the way Oli was talking, I thought he was trying to re he was trying to do this fluid Manchester United, Rooney, Tevez, Ronaldo interchange in front three kind of thing. And obviously, a striker like Carlin doesn't really fit that for me. Like he's he's not a target man, but he's a focal point of the attack in it. And I just feel like what Oli said he was gonna do, getting rid of Lukaku to then bring in Haaland, it kind of contradicts itself. But at the same time. He's young for his age in Europe. Like, if you don't buy Haaland now and you let him go somewhere else, you probably end up paying 80 million plus for him at a later date. So I think that it's a good move for United. I'd even argue that Oli should have probably made that move, yeah? As soon as we sold Lukaku, you should have bought Haaland then. You'd have probably got him even cheaper. Um, so... I don't really know other than like I'm just going to back him guys and I think everyone should back him as well like I'm not going to pretend like I'm not skeptical about him I'm not quite sure about him I don't think he's as good as everyone thinks he is but he's young and he knows where the fucking goal is so that's a good place to start and he's physical so he could add another dimension to our game and him and Lukaku him and Martial up front like, you know what I mean? When we, when we do switch to like a 3-5-2, I believe that Mar Martial just off him could be something. Do you know what I mean? So, I'm just going to say, yeah, let's get behind the kid, innit? Let's get behind the kid. Kev McGee, would you start Twanzebe over Lindelof going forward? I still think we are a decent centre-back, sure. I would, bro. Um, I definitely think we're a decent centre-back, sure. Um... I think that Harry Maguire needs pace next to him, innit? I think Axel Twanzebe is um, brilliant, but he's not ready for week in, week out. I think Lindelof's good. I think we need to get rid of Phil Jones, and we need to bring in a proper centre-off. A proper fucking centre-off. That's what we need to. And the thing is, yeah, man think that man have to go and get an absolute worldie, yeah? Like, we don't. We just need someone that will improve what we've got. When you look at Matip and um, Van Dijk, yeah? It's more about having a partnership that complements each other. It's just like Gomez plays next to him sometimes as well. You don't need two worldies, bro. Harry Maguire is not a worldie. He's a good centre mid. I mean, a good centre back. But to be honest, even someone like Ake would fucking improve our defence. I'm not saying go out and get him. Even a Mings would improve our defence. And look at the club that he's at. Because Lindelof just saying that good, bro. Like... I'm going to be real, like, there's centre-backs that are at smaller clubs that would improve Arctic, bruv. Like, I'd probably rather have Johnny Evans, yeah, like, next to Harry Maguire than fucking Lindelof. Like, I'm, I'm going to be completely honest with you, bruv, because I think Johnny Evans is better than him. So, it, it's one of them ones where um, Lindelof's decent on the ball, but I think to be successful in the Premier League, like, I don't, I don't know how you can be a defender that's not really physical, don't really have pace, not really good in the air. Like, do you know what I mean? It's like, I just don't get it. Like, in Spain, bro, Lindelof would do bits in Spain, blood. But in the Premier League, I just feel like you can get at Victor, innit? So if you don't have pace, you have to be a physical shithouse, bro. I don't understand. I don't know how you can be a pretty footballer and that at the back and not have pace, bro. Like, because it's mad because Mourinho sold daily blind. Because Daily Blind wasn't physical, yeah? But he's a better footballer than Lindelof. So you sell Daily Blind and then bring in Lindelof, bruv. That's dumb. That don't make no sense to me. Do you see what I mean? So, for me, Axel definitely physically suits um, Harry Maguire as a partner better. But ultimately, the best partner for Harry Maguire would have been Chris Smalling, bruv. Cristiano Smaldini. And now he's doing bits in Italy. So, um... Let me know what you man are saying. Are you man still sold on Victor? Or do you think we need centre-back reinforcements? Alright, this guy's name is Oli Gunner Glazer, bruv. I'm dying. I called him Oli Glazer, um, social blood. The G's for Glazer, bruv. OGS and that. Why are we persisting with a formation that requires a number 10 when we don't have a proper one? Very good question. But I don't think that it's the formation that's a problem. I think it's the coaching of the formation that's a problem. Because I think... That the, there's no attacking structure and the movement of the ball means that the number 10s are struggling. I still I still insist that Lingard can do a decent job at the 10 if he has floaters around him. 
but he doesn't have people around him. These these strikers don't know. I mean, not even just these strikers. Our attacking players off the ball are not being coached, bruv. It's freestyle football. And right now, they're making the wrong decisions a lot of the time. Um, so I don't think that you can't play with a number 10 in the modern game because you can. But I just think that the dynamics of your midfield have to be spot on. You need to have like an energetic ball winner. You need to have a deep lying playmaker that can pass the ball. And then that will facilitate our number 10 like a Bruno Fernandes to play him in the pocket. But um, I just think that the balance of our midfield is not quite there. I think what Fred is, yeah, and what McTominay is, like the balance is okay. It's not perfect. Like, McTominay can't really pass. Do you know what I mean? If McTominay could pass, like how Fred could pass, or if McTominay had Fred's engine on him, do you know what I mean? Then, cool. Do you see what I'm saying? Because right now, McTominay is physical, but you wouldn't really say he's the ball winner. You'd say Fred's the ball winner. But Fred's the ball winner and he can pass. Do you see what I mean? Like, McTominay, if you swapped, like, the McTominay... For a Christian Eriksen, who was a passer, you've got the ball winner, energetic, boom, 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 and then the quarterback, and then the 10, it can work. Do you see what I mean? I just think that their, um, their attributes, even though they do complement each other, they don't complement a number 10. Having a number 10, it complements having another number 8, if that makes sense. So... Yeah, that's just all I can say about that. I think it's more the coaching than, than anything else. I think we could play with a 10. I genuinely think we could play with a 10 if we got the balance right. But again, it comes down to coaching, teaching these guys how to use the ball, movement off the ball, how to circulate the ball and how to transition from defence to attack. Right now, it just seems like Oli's told fucking um, his new skipper, Harry Maguire, that he can just fucking hit the channels, bro. Like It's Route 1 Sunday League shit, bro. It's relegation football. And last but not least, it says, at Avinash, do you think that legends of the club are helping the cause or aggravating it by a constant criticism of, cert of certain players only? Um, guys, I'm going to be honest with you, yeah? In football, there's just a lot of politics and nepotism, yeah? And that's what you're seeing with a lot of these ex-players. That's why, with all due respect, I have to separate the player from the man, innit? Because a lot of these men chat absolute shit. And a lot of these men don't watch United week in, week out. Don't be fooled, yeah? If these men are not getting paid to watch Manchester United and they're not commentating on the game, most of the time, these men are not watching 90-minute games, bro. Don't ever get it twisted. A lot of them, you get exposed like Peter Schmeichel and that come out saying, yeah, we should back the manager and this, that and the other. And then when Man United are playing, you see him sitting at another stadium watching another game. Most of these men are not watching the games live, bro. And this, this is the thing. And then... When you get a lot of these fucking pundits as well, they'll come out and say, oh, um, certain fans aren't qualified to have an opinion. But actually, bro, like, we watch our team's games every week. Every week. Like, I met Flex because I was just a fan going to games. And even though I had my own profile and I was doing stuff in the media away from, away from football, I met Flex because man's been going to Old Trafford, like, regular for like the last when did i get that season ticket free um van gaal's last season is when i got a season ticket and, and i was able to go to every home game and i just don't go every game because flex is the presenter flex is the presenter so flex has to be at all the games i don't have to be at them so like i go to the ones that i can go to but i don't do you know what i'm saying if i can't go i can't go because i've got loads of other business things that I do outside of this but the facts are even if I'm not at the game best believe I'm watching it bro best believe I'm watching it but I try and do my best to come to as many games as possible so a lot of these ex-pros as much as they say they love the club and all that they love the club because they're born into this United thing a lot of the time and it's like yeah I love Man United I love Man United but are you watching the games though most of the time they're not watching the games bro if you're not seeing these man on Sky Sports, doing punditry and stuff like that. These men are not sitting down watching 3 o'clock kickoffs and trying to find a stream if they're not at the game. They're not doing that. Believe me, they're not doing that. And you can tell they're not doing that by some of the shit that you hear these men say. And you're thinking, you definitely don't watch us, bro. So, 
All they're going to do is they're going to protect their mate Oli. That's all these men are doing, a lot of them. And you see them tweeting and talking absolute shit. Don't want to criticise Oli. They don't want to criticise the fact that we can break down, we can beat big teams here, but we can't break down small teams. Blame the players. So all they want to do is blame the players. That's why a lot of these players as well are just like, yo, fuck all these men, bro. It's a combination of envy because a lot of these players, like the Skullses, the Giggses and all of that, they weren't making 100 grand a week like the Jesse Lingards and stuff like that. They weren't. So a lot of it is resentment because these guys were actually world-class players and never made that kind of money. But because of the way that football's changed, you're getting mediocre players on big, big money now. So a lot of the older lot, especially like the Sunesses and all of that, there's a lot of resentment now. They're looking at these men thinking, you know what? I want a European Cup and these fuckers are on £100,000 a week. Like, I get that some of these young players might be a reminder of how unfair maybe it was in your eyes, but that's life, isn't it? But a lot of the shit that these men do is all agenda-driven, which is why fan channels are on the rise and they will continue to be on the rise, bro. Because whether you agree with the opinion of the fan or not, you know you're getting authentic fan opinion. There's no agenda behind it. There's no media driving it. There's not, oh, he's trying to get a job at Manchester United, so I don't want to say nothing about the Glazers. Because when men are talking about the, Ga the Glazers and Ed Woodward and that, how many of these pundits and ex-footballers are talking about them? Jamie Carragher will talk about the owners, but where's Gary Neville coming out talking about the owners or any of these other men? When Flex asked Rio about the um, owners and this, that and the other and Ed Woodward and that, bruv, man just, just declined to comment, bro. Do you see what I'm trying to say? So, the real fan opinion, yeah, is where you're going to get the real shit, whether you like it or not. So, don't rely on any of these ex-pros to give you anything but biased yeah or agenda driven opinions blood because them men are thinking about their brand and their pocket and their relationship with the club first or foremost we don't have no relationship with the club we do get press passes and all these other things but that's not given to us by the club that's given to us a lot of the time by the opposition club when we travel in europe so either way guys like just don't expect that from these guys bro yes they're manchester united legends they're Manchester United fans or whatever, but these men are not waking up at three in the three o'clock in the morning like some of you um, overseas fans. Um, they're not getting up and travelling, yeah, from fucking London or from Bristol or from Birmingham or whatever, like you guys, to go stand in the fucking freezing cold. If their men are not in a press box, yeah, more times they're not at the game. So that that's all I can really say um, about that. But thanks for your questions, guys. That was your rants red talk sponsored by the one football app for all your up-to-date football news link is in the description also people keep asking me about um my king merchandise as well my discount code and the link for the close is in the description to all my youtube videos you're welcome to use that whenever you want um i'm gonna leave the code ongoing so you look and get that it's man like rants at the checkout for your discount um and yeah man it's been emotional, guys. Any more news about the fights or whatever, make sure you follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Rants and Bants to stay up to date with all of that shit. And the Flex and Rant show comes out tomorrow at 1 o'clock. The Mason Greenwood agenda has been pushed, bro. I'm looking forward to you lot seeing that. We had a lot of fun filming that. So, yeah, enjoy the rest of your evening. And, man, will catch you in a bit. <laughs>